Thank you very much, Mr. Andrew. Uh, I'm very grateful to be invited to the uh, Dumpling County um, and share my story being persecuted under Chinese Communist Party. Uh, also, I always thanks to my wife, Emma, who come with me today. My name is Winston Liu, right here. I am a computer control engineer working in North Carolina. So, I used to be a member of China's academic elite before 2005, when I was in China. But, never in my wildest dreams did I expect to be thrown into jail, prison, detention center, survived on the verge of mental disorder, tortured and abused physically, mentally, between 1999 and 2003. Why did Chinese Communist Party target, target me? Because I refused to give up my faith in Falun Gong. This is back to 1999, I was a PhD candidate in China's prestigious uh, university called Tsinghua University. People in China call it the Chinese MIT. It's absolutely very famous university in China, even in the world. This picture shows the building of the Department of Thermal Engineering. I'm a, I spend a lot of time in this building. Before practicing Falun Gong, you know, my life was filled up with modern science, but my spiritual life was empty. With Chinese regime's wholesale destruction of Chinese uh, traditional culture, my, my, in my mind, you know, I, typically people in my age, didn't mind to take advantage from others. But uh, because I came from a family of, uh, you know, holding traditional, uh, uh, Values in my heart, I always very I was very struggling. Many times I, I I asked myself, should I compromise the ethical values to exchange in benefit? I think everyone asks you this question here. I'm a fortunate. A year earlier, in 1998, I was fortunate, very fortunate to find my face of Falun Gong. It became extremely popular in the 1990s in China. Falun Gong is an advanced self-cultivation uh, practice rooted in China's uh, Buddhist and Taoist cultures and philosophies that facilitates the transcendence of body, mind, and spirit. This picture shows you five sets of exercises uh, including meditation. Practi practitioners emphasize the balance among the universal principle of truthfulness, <coughs> compassion, and tolerance. Falun Gong helped me reconnect with our 5,000 year old spiritual heritage and feels empty void in my heart. I received the guidelines of, about how to be a good person and uh, become more responsible to my to my family, to community. I still remember those wonderful days. I became a kinder, energetic person with inner peace. Unlike the communist regime, Falun Gong never forced me to do anything. Our master, Li Hongzhi, asked for no money, no worship, and no dictate. But suddenly, everything changed. July 20, 1999 is a date I never forget. Chinese dictator Jiang Zemin made my spiritual cultivation illegal. It, he launched a nationwide campaign against the Falun Gong. He mobilized entire Chinese communist infrastructure with 50 years of history of persecuting Chinese people to eradicate Falun Gong. Xiang made three policies to 
against the Falun Gong practitioners, destroy their reputations, bankrupt them financially, eliminate them physically. Since that time, my people have been subject to subject to hate propaganda, portraying us as a subhuman to justify the persecution in the eyes of the public. I clearly remember that propaganda campaign was running 24-7 on all government-controlled media. The de dehumanizing propaganda instilled hatred toward Falun Gong practitioners into many Chinese people's minds, who thus view Falun Gong as an enemy of the state. The picture shown here is a street exhibit denouncing Falun Gong. One day, one of the CCP officials called me to his office. I told him that the truth of Falun Gong is not what you heard from the TV, from the media. He said, I don't care what you say. You're wrong as long as communist regime labeled you as enemy. How can you dare not follow the command from communist regime? Good or bad is not a deal of common values. It's up to communist regime's definition. So after that, I was suspended from school. CCP official told me that I was not qualified as a PhD candidate as long as I, until I give up Falun Gong. Since July 20, I had lived in extreme fear. Every day, I learned someone who used to be my fellow practitioners were arrested, harassed, harassed, or arrested to you know, sent to labor camp. Sometimes I heard of the, some practitioners were tortured to death because CCP officials want to get, break their break them, either for monetary bonus or super for, from favor, super, uh, favor from supers. Every time I trembled when I heard of this, those news because. I don't know when it will happen to me. But no place to hide. One day in January 2000, a CCP official knocked my door. She said, go with me, no question. We stopped at a hostel 40 miles away in Beijing city, where a forced brainwash was prepared for me. Furthermore, when I was surprised when I, when I saw my parents when I arrived. My parents never practiced Falun Gong. CCP official just leveraged my parents to break my will. In following 15 days, my mom wept in front of me every day, distressing about the implication of my future and fearing for my life. She got sick seriously and could not fall into sleep every day. CCP officials didn't offer my mom any treatment and also would not let us leave this place. We were not allowed to step out of the hostel. Some people were assigned to monitor us, including my parents. So after that, I realized fear and hiding doesn't help. I have to stand up. I became fearless. Here are two pictures from the internet. Falun Gong practitioners who are holding banners in the left side of the picture are being assaulted, not me. But I had the exact same experience on June 18, 2000, 
when I appealed in Tiananmen Square by holding a banner for the end of persecution. In following 38 days, I was detained, charged with so-called suspected, suspected illegal Falun Gong gathering. After I was released, I wrote an article about my experience. It was published in Overseas Minghui.org website. It irritated CCP, CCP authority again. On January 1st, 2001, policemen broke into my apartment in the early morning, abducted my ex-wife and I, delivered us to the detention center. They searched out every room, took my personal properties to police stations such as cash, valuables, banking card, everything. Never returned. Remember those three policies. They, they, they don't worry about those anything if they just rob everything from vulnerable, any vulnerable practitioners. All, CCP authority gave them the power to rob any vulnerable property, practitioner's property, even kill you. After a years of detention, I was accused of publishing information about Falun Gong to internet and spreading it. At the end of trial, I was sentenced to three years in jail. My ex-wife was sentenced to 12 years in jail. A lot of people asked me, hey, where, why is this so much difference? She, she was a, a Falun Gong practitioner as well. The criteria of years of execution or how widely an individual spreads the truth of Falun Gong to the public. You speak out for, uh, for truth, they sentence the more years. <clears throat> we have been waiting for 14 years to get together, but she, she was brainwashed seriously in 10 years of jail uh, prison time and uh, divorced me in 2014. <clears throat> The total time we were my first marriage, we spent time together probably less than one year. The picture shown at the right, right hand side illustrate a form of a, a typical torture using cold water. In detention center, the police the policemen encourage in other inmates to pour cold water from a tap to my naked body. It continued half hour in the coldest winter season until I was completely unconscious. <clears throat> and then uh, they threw me on the floor without covering. I survived after a couple hours. There was no human dignity at all. That's the feeling I will never recall. In prison, I also spent six months in solitary confinement in a 70 square foot room, and utterly, completely deprived of any human contact. Police officer told me directly that they would drive me insane if I would not give up following them. Towards the end of jail time, I was on the verge of mental disorder. When I was in prison, I also received extensive medical exam. That happened in a day in July of 2002. 40 fallen Falun Gong practitioners in that prison guided by the, by the guards to the hospital associated with the prison. I got blood test, x-ray exam, eye exam, urine test, and more. The inmate who was assigned to monitor me laughed very hard when I told him there these are regular health assessment for every prisoner. Why? because he never received such extensive medical exam. 
obviously it targeted only Falun Gong practitioners. I don't know the answer until 2006, when two lawyers of their Mr. Dave, David Makers and the David Kilger investigated the unwilling organ donor since the medical exam. Uh, unwilling first organ harvesting in China. I believe that I had I have been an unwilling organ donor since the medical exam in prison. I could be killed at any time as long as my physical index matched with a person who was looking for a transplant, organ transplant. I just got so much lucky to stand here with you today. In August 2005, I fled to Canada after admitted with a scholarship by University of Calgary. When the plane departed Beijing airport, I breathed a sigh of relief. I said to myself, goodbye, endless fear. Goodbye, assault and harassment. Bye, mom and dad. My love. I'm sorry for leaving this country. You take care of yourself. In Canada, when I saw local Falun Gong practitioners going through the exercise together in the park, I could not hold my tears again. Freedom, <clears throat> it's not just a word, it's something I can touch. Yeah, I think uh, we passed that, passed the period of uh, emo emotional. <laughs> yeah, thank you for experiencing this uh, emotional time with me. You know, it's, for me, it's always uh, hard to recall memory. You know, it's not easy. It's all. It always disturbed me. I think uh, I still think I'm uh, so lucky. Every time when I speak. I think, wow, I can stand here to tell people what happening to Falun Gong practitioners and, and how we go CCP, you know, to their own people. But uh, this type of uh, persecution applied to 200 million Falun Gong practitioners. Be remember. Liberal media never told you this. Mm -hmm. Falun Gong practitioners is the largest group CCP targeted to eliminate. Since then, CCP take the, took the power from China, in China. But we'll, I will I will have several questions, you know, and answer you several questions from this, this slide because you never heard of this and why. First question, why did CCP go after Falun Gong? I believe everyone have this question in your mind. So, according to Freedom of, oh, okay, anyway, so sounds like they cut a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. According to the Freedom House uh, uh, re special report released in 2017, there are four fundamental conflicts between Falun Gong and the CCP shown here. The first one is uh, popularity. 
1999, Falun Gong uh, get uh, 70 to 100 million practitioners. This is not a number from, from the Falun Gong group, because the Falun Gong group have no formal membership. It's free come, free go. They, you know, completely free. It actually come from the uh, survey of uh, CCP. Yeah, because they monitor every uh, civil group, every assembly. So at that time, CCP have a member 63 million. So Falun Gong members, uh, Falun Gong practitioners are uh, over uh, number, you know, exceed the number of uh, member of uh, CCP. So, and I said the CCP have no freedom of assembly, and they would monitor and control members with uh, internal CCP branch, uh, even in Falun Gong group. And uh, but Falun Gong group, you know, and and the very beginning, we don't want any formal membership. Of course, we don't want any uh, CCP branch, you know, to monitor our members. It's all free, free come, free go. So the third thing, third one is uh, about the uh, ideology conflict. CC, in the Falun Gong promote truth, compassion, and tolerance as a universal principle, and believe in divine. But CCP promote materialism, atheism, class struggle, and extreme nationalism. So, communist ideology is the foundation to demand loyalty to CCP. For the purpose of establish of establishment of a political power, CCP turned the community harmony into hostility, hatred, and struggle. For example, in China, Rural society was initially harmonious, and the relationship between the landlord and the tenants were not entirely confrontational. But CCP made lies to tenants using so-called class struggling theory to incite hatred, because they need hatred to stir up struggles. Remember. Inside the masses to struggle each other against each other is a classic trick of the communist regime anywhere in the world. It resulted in many cases in which Chinese people brought harms to each other, typically during Cultural Revolution in 1960s and 1970s. Chinese people were hurt very deeply. So when Falun Gong came out, People were excited because Falun Gong encouraged, you know, Falun Gong rooted into traditional Buddhist and Taoist culture and encouraged empathy and harmony among people without any political motive motivation. So that, therefore, Falun Gong became very popular in all walks of life. So in the results of conflict, there was a period of growing repression from 1996 to 1999, before it became nation nationwide persecution. Even though many in the CCP uh, authority held favorable views of Falun Gong, several top CCP leaders began viewing Falun Gong belief, Falun Gong's belief and teachings values and a threat to fundamental principles of Marxism, resulting in a periodic act of repression. During that time, we, we could practice still in public, but Falun Gong primary book, John Falun, was banned in 1996. Also, state-run media outlets smeared the Falun Gong intermittently. Responding to the acts of suppression, Falun Gong practitioners appealed to government and the media's outlets. The last one, also the largest one, was April, 20, uh, April 25 in 1999. More than 10,000 practitioners uh, appealed to the CCP leadership 
in Tiananmen's, uh, I think in uh, government, central government compound. Yeah. So later, CCP dictator used this event to paint Falun Gong as a threat to their power and launch the campaign to eliminate Falun Gong. I guess you you understand this difference. Mm -hmm. They started, you know, uh, harass Falun Gong group and repress repress Falun Gong from 1996. But when Falun Gong had a very large appealing in 19 in April 25 in 1999, they used this event event as excuse to launch the persecution against the Falun Gong. And how about this event is? This picture shown here, it is a practitioner standing on the sidewalk facing to the entrance of the central government compound. When, I, when this event happened, I was in Beijing and I joined the appeal on the day. On the people standing over there on the, on the sidewalk, wonderful with me. Nobody forced me to be there. It was volunteer completely. The, the appealing was so peaceful. Even police officer praised us as great people. They could never be such relaxed in front of the appeal. Let's back to the previous slide. I spent some time to answer this so why CCP goes after Falun Gong. I hope this, this, this part could help you understand what is unfolding in the USA today. Have you found the similarities? Yes. Good. I found a lot of similarities. I give you some example here. I would ask you that after that. For example, critical race theory versus class struggling theory. Same thing in my eye. Cancel culture versus cultural revolution in China. Same thing. Specifically, reasons recent years continuous attacks to those American patriots who hold traditional values. Reasons of defunding the police to destroy local law enforcement officials who hold loyalty to constitution instead of loyalty to the government. Remember, Inciting hatred, number one. Destroying tradition, number two. Demanding loyalty, number three. Are three of most important features of communist regime. They all appear in America today. You may doubt, but in my eye, CCP has been inside America. They have launched another campaign to eliminate American core values and the patriots. I grew up in China. CCP's ambitions ruling the world was in my textbook from elementary school to the college. Well, Sound hard to believe, right? Let us look at, oh, I forget, I'm sorry. I should ask you. Hey, from this, uh, what, what do you find the similarities? Except the, well, something I mentioned. I would uh, have a, one person to give me uh, your answer. I think um, popularity, for sure. I think that, um, you know, when we talk about, we'll just take, um, you know, patriots that follow, that followed Trump, that voted for Trump, that sort of thing. The moment they became more popular, more present, 
more vocal than the Democrats or than the current government or globalists or that sort of thing, they became public enemy number one mm -hmm. because they posed that threat to the establishment. Exactly. Yeah. Number of the patriots stood up. So they treat they saw this as a threat to their political power mm. establishment. Okay, so next question. What what's the implication of this uh, persecution against the following practitioners to the Western world? I want to talk about only two things because this is the two things most you know important to Americans. The first one, you all know, we lost a lot of lives and personal freedom during this uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. I heard that this uh, virus outbreak in December 2019. Remember, I'm a Chinese. I have more channels to obtain Chinese information, information, new China news, you know, uh, than, than other people, than Americans. And I knew that that time I know, I knew that CCP will cover. For people growing up in America, America, they thought cover up was a joke. But for Chinese, we all know that cover up is a common response of a communist regime's government to civil emergency event and human rights abuse. This for us, this is not a topic for debate at all. That's why in December 2019, when I told my coworker that uh, you need to be careful of travel, don't travel to China, don't travel even in America. They laugh. They said, what? What are you talking about? In Jan on January 23, 2020, that's the date when the CCP officially acknowledged the virus outbreak and blocked the travel from Wuhan to other cities. But before the date, even though they know this, uh, this virus have the character of a person-to-person -person transmission, they kept the international flights from Wuhan to other countries, allowing the virus to spread all over the world. From an internal um, uh, statistic made, uh, made by someone you know, in China, you know, uh, you know, uh, count the, the flight numbers and the, the, the people fly out of China uh, from Wuhan. It said there are millions Wuhan people, Wuhan citizens, fly to everywhere in the world. Millions. Before the before communist China government blo uh, blocks the travel. Millions. How many populations in Wuhan city? You know? About 100 million, more than 100 million. That's a very big city. So my point is, if the West, Western world requested the trans transparency in China's health system in, in the issue of organ transplant abuse, in first organ harvesting, I remember, America could control the spreading of the virus from December 2019. So when I, I was frustrated when you know those liberal media uh, uh, defame uh, Trump administration uh, about the uh, uh, blocked travel in early February, I remember 2020, said uh, why do this? Well, you know those lib I was uh, what? It's too late. Outbreak in December 2019. It's already two months behind.
if the American government could get the, uh, all those information like I had, you know, they if they uh, shut down the uh, the board, you know, the boundary two months earlier, a lot of lives can be saved. Let's move to second impact <clears throat> about your job and your money loss. One of my coworkers in the, asked me last year. Do you believe CCP stole intellectual property from America? I said, yes, 100%. He was shocked a little bit and uh, asked for evidence, evidences. I said, well, FBI could provide you a lot of evidences, but I can tell you from my own observations. You have this question because you assume that Chinese scholars hold the same moral standards with you. It's wrong. Since 1999, because, of, because the CCP launched the persecution, and everyone knows the Falun persecution to, against the Falun Gong, and everyone knows the Falun Gong people, practitioners are good person, and following the principle of truthfulness, compassion, and the tolerance. So, when at least uh, I heard more than one time from my friend, hey, if the government persecutes these principles, it means uh, we we need to be we, we need to we need to become a bad person. We're safe. That's exactly true. That's exactly happened in China after 1999. So through the whole process of the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners, uh, you know, CCP actually not only attacked the Falun Gong principles, but also deeply destroyed the moral fabrics of Chinese society. Not surprised nowadays if you see some Chinese people in American land, land they did some bad thing without moral uh, values, so, you know, no surprise. Typically those young generation who grow up after 19, 2000. Because that's the society who CCP encouraged you to be a bad person. No traditional value at all. So Chinese scholars, who stole those uh, China, American intellectual properties would not feel shame when, because either he will, you know, feel satisfy his own uh, uh, benefits, you know, selfish purpose, or he will be he would be in, uh, encouraged to, by communist regime government. Yeah, because communist regime would steal the, the you know, American intellectual properties to make them strong. Because their their ultimate goal is to turn down America. America. But uh, I I would make make it clear. I, I came from academic world, you know, academic elites. You know, I, I was in one of the uh, international students in when I was in University of uh, Calgary. I, I'm not pointing to all the Chinese scholars. You know, typically those students who um, receive the scholarship, you know, and work hard, those people usually don't want to do this, you know, help, don't want to help a uh, communist regime. But for those students who was supported by communist regime financially. They very they tend to the, do this help of communist regime to steal. So far, I believe you have created a, created a full picture about Falun Gong. But uh, another question: Why haven't I heard of this genocide before now? And how was, has this Western media handled this? It's 22 years, right? Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting question, though. If you could understand it, you would be an ex expert in terms of CCP's infiltration to America and the nature of the liberal 
elite culture. Not very accurate, but generally speaking, roles of Western media changed twice. In the beginning of persecution, Western media did report on the Falun Gong repression regularly. Many journalists tried to dig truth. Then the issue was somewhat ignored or biased. New York Times led the way. Actually, there was a meeting in 2001 between New York Times publisher and the former CCP dictator Jiang Zemin, Jiang Zemin in August 2001. Perhaps there's something to do in that meeting because uh, after the meeting, nytimes.com website was unblocked in China. Really? Because the communist regime government censored all the Western media. Why they allow New York Times? So, do you still read New York Times? No. Good. <clears throat> no surprise. Self-censorship among journalists has become the norm. So recent years, even worse, some U.S. media distribute CCP hate against the Falun Gong. A series of news and magazines articles distort the teachings and beliefs of Falun Gong. Why would they do that? This is a freedom world. Free. When progressive journalists found victim group of Falun Gong is not useful for their social agenda. Even though Falun Gong practitioners never attempted to impose their views on anyone, liberal elites view Falun Gong teachings and values as a threat to their social agenda. When you recall the CCP view the Falun Gong teachings and values as a threat to their authority, I believe you will be shocked by the hypocrisy of the elite culture. What's under the mask of those liberal agenda? Authority, right? They are seeking total control over your life in the name of a better life you will have. In my eyes, progressive agenda is just another form of a communist ideology wrapped by different color. The book published by published by English Epoch Times. Um, the, how the specter of communism is ruling our world. Actually, I brought a set and a gift to Mr. Angel tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And also, this book is free. You can read from this flyer. At the end, you just scan the code. And also, in the information sheet, you will see, you see it. there is a website. It's a free reading if you go to the website. I really, I strongly recommend this book, you read this book. You will have a very deep understanding about what's going on, what's going on in America now. And, and after you read this book, please tell other people, go out to speak out. Because if you don't stand up, you don't speak out, you are going to lose freedom very soon. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's move to another interesting question. You, you, you may wonder, hey, Falun Gong practitioners suffered so much. Did they just uh, stay at home, do nothing? No. The way Falun Gong practitioners responded to the per persecution made a profound change in, inside China nowadays. We believe the best way to counter the CCP's attack is to facilitate the change inside China. 
Chinese people were surrounded by anti Falun Gong propaganda. If they could access to free information and more exposures to exposures to good values, they would less likely to become the CCP's accomplice or advance its agenda in the international community. Knowing that, and the fact that CCP controls all media channels in China, Falun Gong practitioners launched the largest information campaign in modern history as non-violent resistance against the CCP's oppression. Across China, practitioners have been operating 200,000 or more underground printing houses to produce the flyers, the brochures, and information DVDs. And then tens of millions of practitioners distribute to every home in every town or city, often at night, and great personal risk. In response to internet censorship, overseas practitioners formed the team of computer scientists, including Ivy League graduates, developed the most successful internet freedom software. Helped millions in China break through CCP's Great Firewall. To counter propaganda in CCP-controlled media, some practitioners started own newspaper, TV station, and radio stations, first in Chinese and then in a dozen other languages. These are independent media organizations. They don't represent or speak for Falun Gong. One brand you may be familiar is the Epoch Times, focusing on truth and the tradition. How many people read Epoch Times news and, uh, you know, good? After today, I hope you, you know, if you need to know what's the truth, what happened in America, America Epoch Times news will give you reliable news and resources. resources. That's, in my eyes, that's probably the only media give you, you, you can, you know the truth. They, they, uh, they cover a lot of things other liberal media would not cover. So, Allsight is an organization with a reputation of uh, monitoring media bias. Last, uh, last year, it rated the Epoch Times News reporting as the most neutral among several other mainstream medias, including the New York Times, AP, BBC, and the Bloomberg. So this, these efforts began with no funding and with no centralized organizations behind them. It all comes from Falun Gong practitioners' own pocket. Of course, we, you know, for example, the, to develop the internet uh, uh, breakthrough software, we are, of course, we looked for the uh, support from the USA, you know, government, you know, looked for the funding, but unfortunately, those politicians never support us, even though we develop this advanced software. So that's the, probably the only software help Chinese people break through internet censorship. So a lot, of, a lot of Chinese people uh, read the uh, truth and uh, and start uh, uh, rethink the, what communist regime is. All these efforts made the profound the impact on Chinese society, and it has evolved into the NCCP movement in 2005. And as a result, to date, over 380 million Chinese people have withdrawn from the CCP and its affiliated organizations. Most use the pseudo name to avoid the CCP's retaliation. This is a phenomenon very similar to what happened in, uh, right before the collapse of Soviet Union. Sometimes, Chinese people who were brainwashed by CCP question our motivation. Again, we are not interested with the political power. We do not have political agenda. However, 
From Falun Gong's teaching, we do believe that the path to personal salvation is achievable through the improvement of the soul. How to improve? Returning to tradition, rejecting CCP will reconnect yourself to the God. I hope my insights about the communist regime can help you understand what is unfolding in America today, even though it disturbs me every time. I fled China for freedom. I don't want to lose freedom again. I believe you don't want. When I saw the struggle and hatred happened in American land recently, my heart was broken. I love this country. Not only USA is a beacon of hope for the oppressed, but also I met so many wonderful people who have wonderful heart. American people do not deserve this. Mm -hmm. I do not see myself as distant, but I do believe Universal principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance exist above time and human opinion. What is true remains true, even when it is ignored. What is good is still good, when it is, even when it is persecuted. Those who return to tradition Reject communism will have their reward by the God. God bless America. Thank you.